Hey, Gordon. Hi, Martin. How are you doing? <laughs> Not too bad. Good to see you again. And you. Yeah. We're going to talk about Highland Park and we're going to talk about single malt. And I want to know where do the flavours come from? They come principally from three different areas. First of all, and, and unique to Highland Park, is the fact that we use malt peated at the distillery. And when I'm talking about peat, I'm talking about this stuff. This has been it's vegetable matter, it's, it's plants that have been compressed over millennia and, and we, we don't dry the malt with that but what we do is we burn that to produce the smoke and it has a very distinct character. Um, because Orkney is very windy and has very few trees on it, the peat in Orkney is made up completely different from the peat in the rest of Scotland. There's very little woody material in it and consequently when you burn that peat to produce the smoke to impart that flavour to the malt, it's a very aromatic smoke that gets imparted on the malt. So that's really our first decision is we, we want a peated whisky. Now we mix our peated malt with some unpeated malt to take that phenol level down even more. So Highland Park is actually a, a relatively lightly peated whisky. Will there be other distilleries in Scotland using the Orkney peat? No, we are the only distillery that uses Orkney peat, so that is entirely unique to, to Highland Park. So it makes and Highland I, Park yeah. stand out a bit? Yeah, it's a, a completely different character. The second stage comes from the fermentation. I mean, if you do a long fermentation, short fermentation, you ramp the temperature up quicker or slower, that can all influence the flavours that are developed in the first part of it, and then the distillation. So it's through the production process the speed of distillation, the size and shape of the stills, these all contribute to the character of single malt whisky. And these stills, again, are unique to Highland Park. And the third and perhaps most important aspect is the casks that we put that whisky into. Now I've heard, say, various statements that casks give you 60% or 80% of the flavour. It's kind of true, it's actually the interaction with the casks that brings the flavour, not just solely the casks. Now we use principally sherry casks and we make them out of two different types of wood. We, we have either American oak or European oak. European oak is much tighter grained. Um, it's very high in tannins, which give you that dark colour and the, the dried fruit character and the rich spicy character. American oak sherry casks are made from oak trees that grew in America. It's a different species of oak. It's high in lactones and vanillin, and that gives you a sweet, creamy vanilla note. And you'll notice these, this sherry cask, the Spanish oak, has been uh, lightly toasted. The American oak sherry cask, maybe heavier toasted. But when you come to something like a bourbon cask, bourbon casks have been charred. And although they are made with the same wood as an American oak sherry cask, that charring creates some of the flavours in the cask and then actually burns them off. And that char on the inside layer acts as almost a carbon filter. So you, even though these are made with the same wood grown in the same place, this one's had a spirit in it and it's been to uh, charred, this one's had a wine in it and it's been toasted, they give you a completely different character. So you get a rich creamy vanilla character from a sherry cask and from a bourbon cask you'll get a much more fragrant vanilla, perhaps even coconut character from a bourbon cask. We concentrate mainly on these two, and, and that combined with the length of time in the cask helps to develop the flavour and, and gives me the ingredients to make 12, 18, 25 year old. Fantastic. Mm -hmm.